Questions about parachute procedures arise after a tragic army incident. Next-gen squad weapons are on track for troops. And the latest development in the case of a sinking AAV that claimed the lives of nine. It's all on the briefing for this week. Let's dig in. Welcome back to The Briefing, I'm Andrea Scott. In our top story this week, questions about whether a new procedure for deploying parachutes contributed to the death of a Special Forces soldier. The Army is reviewing practices after a January training jump accident claimed the life of a seasoned Green Beret. Army Times reporter Kyle Rumfer has more. The Army's January parachute death unfolds like this. So Master Sergeant Nathan Goodman is a Green Beret with 3rd Special Forces Group. He's a team sergeant there on the team, and he's also one of the most experienced parachutists there. He's a jump master. He has more than 200 uh, free fall jumps, and he is out training with his team um, in a little facility near Phoenix, Arizona, where they are conducting high altitude, high opening jumps. It's a type of parachute jump that allows a team to basically open their parachutes not long after they exit the aircraft and move over great distances under canopy to an objective area. So Goodman and his team have been out training in Arizona for a few days now. They go up for a night jump, full equipment with night vision and oxygen masks. They jump from a sky van, which is a very small civilian twin turboprop aircraft. They jump at about 10,000 feet. Immediately after exiting the aircraft, roughly four seconds, they deploy their parachutes. Goodman, who's one of the last men out of the aircraft, uh, experiences a problem. Goodman's main parachute deploys, and because he was unstable, it began to wrap around him. Uh, it probably tore off some of his equipment, definitely his night vision goggles. So Goodman followed his training. He attempted to deploy his reserve parachute, but the lines again became fouled around him and his equipment. Uh, he was unable to achieve lift uh, under canopy, and so he plummeted towards the ground. Investigation ultimately determined that he died on impact, uh, roughly six miles from the intended drop zone. The accident occurred on January 13th. On January 9th, just a few days earlier, Goodman had been retrained on a new uh, parachute deployment mechanism. Traditionally, military freefall parachutists uh, grab for a ripcord on their right shoulder. They reach down, grab the ripcord, pull it out, and then lift their shoulder to disrupt any sort of pocket of air behind them so their pilot chute, which is spring-loaded, can deploy out into the wind, catch it, and deploy their main canopy. The new deployment method, they are reaching down behind their rig in order to throw out a hand-deployed pilot chute. The Army has been using the right side ripcord deployment method for years and they recently transitioned to a new uh, parachute rig and also are using um, the new parachute deployment method. It's uh, actually considered a safer method. It's more common for, among civilian skydivers and also instructors at the Military Free Fall School in Yuma, Arizona where the majority of these Green Berets went through initial free fall qualification. Those instructors also use this type of deployment method. The hand deployed pilot shoot method is a safer style of parachute deployment. However, uh, the investigation noted some training slides that uh, stated that it was actually more dangerous if a parachute jumper experiences stability problems in free fall. Goodman was jumping a full wall locker. So this means it was his oxygen mask, his night vision goggles, his weapon, and a ruck. The range of motion that a jumper has when it, all that gear is on them is going to be limited. That seems to have played a role in his instability issues during free fall. The investigation said that Goodman must have been experiencing some sort of stability issues as he was falling through the air and attempted to reach back behind him to grab for the pilot shoe. This incident has uh, wider implications for the Army. Uh, Army Special Operations Command is attempting to transition to this new hand deployed pilot shoot method. But of course, because of the fatal incident and because of the range of motion issues that were highlighted by the investigating officer, the Army is starting to set up a working group, which met for a few times this summer. And uh, they're now starting to go through the policies and the guidelines and see if anything needs to be adjusted. Some additional changes that Army Special Operations Command instituted, uh, they're requiring parachutists to have a more stringent physical examination prior to a jump and to make sure that they have that range of motion. And then also they are um, allowing the primary jump master on whatever jump is occurring to have the final say on whether a jumper needs to sit down and get retrained or if they can continue with a jump. 
The Army is continuing to roll out the hand deployed pilot shoot method, and we here at Army Times will continue to cover it as developments arise. Thanks, Kyle. Now, on to this week's headlines. First up, sailors with the guided missile destroyer Winston S. Churchill were stopped by a distress signal last week and provided assistance to an Iranian vessel. The Iranian ship's engine would not start due to a dead battery while they were out in the Arabian Sea. The Churchill crew gave them food and water and called Oman's Coast Guard to help bring the correct battery. Next up, your next-gen squad weapon is still on mark. The gun that will replace both the M249 squad automatic weapon and the M16 and M4 is less than two years away. The next generation squad weapon finished its first prototype in September. Ultimately, the new weapon will be fielded to all close combat forces, including special operations, infantry, combat engineers, and scouts. Next up, the latest into a tragic Marine AAV accident. A July amphibious assault vehicle accident that took the lives of eight Marines and one sailor has now claimed the job of one Marine commander. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Regner was fired from Battalion Landing Team 1-4, quote, due to a loss in trust and confidence in his ability to command. The investigation into the mishap is not yet complete, and the Marine Corps says it is continuing to assess information and take appropriate action. And finally, your outgoing rounds for this week. Hang it! Fire! The British Royal Navy is testing tech that's straight out of a Bond movie. Trials for jet suit assault teams were underway recently amid plans for Special Forces operators to have a new way to board ships at sea. And that's all we have time for this week. Please visit us on MilitaryTimes.com and our social pages on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And check us out on Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps Times for the latest news. I'm Andrea Scott. Have a great week.